The availability of sufficient energy is crucial to our economic growth. India faces nearly 20% of peak power shortage today in spite of substantial increases in energy production and funds allocated for it. Production of coal, which accounts for 60% of commercial energy needs, has increased eightfold. Petroleum products, essential to services like railways, need large budgets, both for domestic production and for heavy import bills to cover the supply shortages. Unfortunately, energy use is not a drain just on the economy. It is often highly polluting, like through inefficient engines used in public transport. Many areas of energy use, like cooking gas, are subsidized. But the public remains largely unconcerned about the depletion of such resources and the heavy costs involved in supplying them. With increased income, people naturally also use more energy for utilities like refrigerators. Domestic energy is a fast-growing sector without people knowing about better options. For example, compact fluorescent lamps, which can reduce pressure during peak hours, are available, but not popular due to an absence of dialogue with the public. Similarly, the development of renewable energy technologies has also suffered due to information lags and insufficient emphasis. Subsidies for cooking gas remain thrice that of funds allocated for the biogas program in the 8th plan. It is alternatives like biogas which have the potential for fulfilling rural energy needs. But they need the motivated involvement of local communities and funding for applied research on renewable technologies like bricketing, among others. Only R&D shows the economic and environmental cost-effectiveness of options like the gas to fuel furnaces, which then induces the industry to adopt such waste recycling methods. The costs of renewables need to be seen in the context of socio-environmental benefits. Presently, these cannot be quantified through mathematical models. When a renewable technology system like solar photovoltaics aids water pumping, what should we be looking at? The initial high costs of setting it up? Or the dent this environment-friendly system makes on the agricultural sector, where electricity consumption increases by almost 15% every year? The approach towards renewables is now dependent on attitudinal changes. The country faces an oil import bill of about 700 billion rupees in 2010. Can subsidies for renewables change the future? Successful attempts like the wind energy program show that such alternatives can overcome energy deficits. With R&D support, India does have options to develop a truly sustainable energy economy.